You're very welcome to the Zoom Room. It's Johnny Ward standing in for Luke Tarr. And we have Bill Esdale and Sylvester D'Souza on the line in the Zoom Room. We're going to talk the arc. Uh, what a weekend. One of the best sporting weekends, not only racing, but sporting weekends in Europe all year round. But unfortunately, Bill Esdale, we can't go and we're going to have to watch it from afar. I know. Watch with, with, well, we don't need an umbrella here. Yeah. We're going to need an umbrella over there by the look of the forecast. Well, this is the key thing, Sylvester. This the ground in, in Longchamp is going to have a massive role to play in the arc. And what's that from your own experience? What's that going to you know make in terms of the test that this arc is going to be? Well, then, arc like as everybody knows is a very competitive and tough race and rough, you know. And I think when you get a slow ground, they slow down a bit the pace, and you know, can can be more tactical, you know. So, but uh, it's just a, such a prestige race, and you know, is I think the whole world stop and watching. You know, is uh, you know, it's just it, it's amazing day for the French French race. You know, I got to mention your form as well. Three of your last seven rides have won, and we're going to actually say three of your last six because one of them actually refused to race. So you're not in bad form yourself. No, the horse is running well, obviously. You know, and uh, having a good run, and you know, don't have every day like big numbers of riders, but uh, they've been quite select for the last few weeks and, uh, you know, has been pay off, you know. And it's uh, good as well that you've just gotten a bit of news this morning that they are giving a bit of leeway for jockeys who ride at Longchamp. You're not going to be there, but some of the um, the English-based riders have given them a little bit of a break. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, you know, it's, we, we, we need to do that because, you know, uh, the best race running, so... All the owners and the trainer want the best rides to travel around, you know. But, uh, you know, we're just going through sort of difficult times. It's, it's just hard, you know, for everybody, mm. you know, trainers, jockeys, owners, you, you know, especially for jockey as well, like, you know, to, to be traveling around. But, uh, you know, Jerry Hill has done an amazing job, you know, open up the options for we to travel abroad. And, you know, with uh, obviously you have to suffer and do a couple of things, you know, and, but uh, you know at the end of the day like we managed to get around absolutely Bill the, the race itself um, I just think the ground is so so key to what happens here in terms of probably not only the top two fillies in the race but also like the obvious stare in Stradivarius um, what sort of ground would you expect at this stage and does that make you with or against and able effectively well we're already nearly heavy mm. if you look at the forecast you it doesn't appear to be that windy, sunny, drying, longchamp day in the forecast. It just seems to be rain every day. Not very much of it, but just enough to hold the ground as bad as it was last year. Mm. And for me, you know, the favourites of flip-flop this week. Enable's become favourite because of the ground concerns for love. Um, Enable was beaten in the race last year, supposedly, because she went for home too soon. But this is a slog. This will be a test. And there's plenty of rain due Saturday night. There's plenty of rain due during the day on art day itself it's going to be a test i would be against the two fillies i'd have to be this becomes a war of attrition um i personally think the race is made for stradivarius now oh no bill we're, we're just we're coming along to the same hymn sheet here yeah well I, he's a proper stayer you know john golson said that he doesn't like soft ground but he's got some really good soft ground for him. he does he soft ground he stays well it didn't go quick enough in his trial I, I liked him and I like the German Derby winner in swoop. I mean, both of them have been well back this week. Um, I think they're around seven and around 14, but I just felt that those are the two I'd like to be with. I think uh, Serpentine has been supplemented. So, you know, he'll, he'll be probably ridden in the similar style to the, he, the way he was in the Derby. I know that people think they'll go a bit slower. They may well go a bit slower, but I still think it'll be the traditional art test. There's too many good horses in them in there for them to dawdle something will go on it becomes a test i think it everything points to me to stradivarius and, and in swoop each way westerner finney second to hurricane run in this race still uh, bago was third back in the day order of saint george third and fourth in this race i'm just mentioning stairs that basically were well up to the test when it became a slog and the more i look at it still it looks like stradivarius is not going to be a certainly I, I can't really see him out of the tree the way it's going to pan out well, he, I do agree with Bill, like, you know, uh, it's such a tough race and the arc and rough. So I think Strada very got every chance. And I think John Gosling could have won too. 
you know, the first two home because then if I think if he start a very get the pace and then a slow brown, I think it takes all him, you know, takes all the beating, like you know, obviously on the on Abel's there, but uh, you know, she's a good filly, a good mare. But uh, you know, I, I can see the two class horses in the race will be on Abel and Stradivari. I think a nice low ground Stradivari might give her a race. Well, what do, what do you make of her defeat last year? Was it tactics or was it the ground that beat her on the day? And I think so. I think mm. so. I think it was the tactical and the speed of the race. Right. So does this is this going to? Bill mentioned certainty in there. I remember this horse winning the Curra Maiden, and at that stage he almost looked vaguely exposed. And all of a sudden he's a he's a bit of a chance in, in the arc. But do you think this is going to be like run at a proper pace? Uh, and how will Bally Doyle kind of make make this set up for Love, who the more rain that falls, kind of the more vulnerable she looks, maybe? Well, Love is a is a it's a great mare, like you know, and uh, and. You know, but I, I I don't think will be they're gonna be hanging around, steady up the pace, and you know trying to sprint at home. I think will be a true running race. Yeah, there's too many there's too many good horses in here for them to dawdle around. Some something mm. go on, and you know I think I think the interesting thing for tactic, tactically is how Frankie rides enable because you know John Gosden's come out and said you know he committed too soon and he went in the full straight and all this kind of stuff. So there's also a worry on this ground. It's, it's hard ground to pick up. I, I, I think um, Vol guys picked them up last year because they went too hard too soon, but you don't want to sit long way back out of your ground on bad ground at Longshore and turn in the straight and have loads of ground to make up against good horses. And, and that, that's my concern um, with Enable. But, you know, I, I, I think it'll be a real slog. And, as we as we saw last year, stamina is everything, and and I think that's what Stradivarius and potentially in swoop bring to the party. One of the bonkers things about Love is her dam was no good. She was really really moderate, but she was by pivotal, and that just might give some sort of um, hope that she will kind of handle the ground. But I was talking to Flynn Gower during the week, Bill, just in the trader chat. They, they Star Sports badly want Love to be beaten, but it it is coming around to the situation where she's a three year old filly. She's kind of encountering ground she really hasn't encounter before she's obviously taken on far better horses and you can kind of see her drifting further i think yeah yeah i mean the thing is is that some uh, she's twos with some firms and you look at it and this is the first time she's taken on the older horses first time she's taken on the boys first time she's going to hit heavy ground first time she's traveled outside the country every box is ticked for making this a massive task if she if she wins she is the superstar that they talk about but this is a completely different test and and I know she, there was some cut in the ground when she won last time, but all of her disappointing kind of two-year-old runs were on, on, on soft ground. I, I, I think she could dr- drift a lot. I, I, I'd be very surprised if she didn't start nearly four to one rather than two to one. I tend to agree. I'm, I'm going to take Stradivarius to emulate his dad. I was there when he won the race, see the stars. Um, and it, it, it's just sad, that, you know, obviously people can't go over there, but something has to win. I would Stradivarius, Sylvester. And, um, well, I, I'd be... Con- Enable for and Stradiver for a each way chance, but uh, you know if, if 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 the ground can't be very slow, I think Stradiver could come on top. Bill, yeah, I, I I'd go I go Stradivarius in swoop each way. Sat Sass is quite interesting as well. Just to give a mention, very good run behind Magical the last day, like probably better than that as well. Will handle the ground no problem. Very interesting runner for Jean Claude Rouget. We have a very interesting um, Irish challenger in Make a Challenge in the in the Abbey as well, Bill, which. Um, you know, an amazing season for Dennis Hogan in so many ways, but he lost his star sprinter sceptical, but now he has a, a lively contender and the more rain that falls, the better in the in the Abbey. And obviously this isn't good news for Batash either. Yeah, I mean, Make a Challenge um, travelled so well in the champion sprint last year um, at Ascot. L- looked like he was going to win and didn't didn't quite get home. Five furlongs, soft ground, perfect for, for this horse. Um Perfect for glass slippers. They won it last year. I think they're the two big players. I know Batash is favourite, but if the rain carries on falling, I really wouldn't be surprised if Batash gets pulled out. Uh, I, I think it's, it's mm. an amazing assignment for, for him. You know, he's, he's got nothing to prove, except, you know, he could get drawn badly and, uh, and tread water. I, I think glass slippers and make a challenge are the clear two f- for me. I, I, you know, I'd, I'd be tempted to take... I think seven or two and seven. I think if you took seven or two and seven, those two, you'd be on a good bet on the day. But this is an important draw race. You need to be draw relatively low here. Um, l- last year, I think the first three or four home were all drawn in kind of like three, five, one, whatever. They're all against that rail. And 
that's an important factor. But no, I, I would definitely be with glass slippers and make a challenge. If you put a gun to my head, I'd say the value would be make a challenge at sevens. I, I think he's a really exciting prospect. Five furlong, soft ground, everything's right for him. What do you think, Sylvester? Well, um, I pick Batash all day. It doesn't matter the ground. I think if he's soft ground or good ground, slow ground. And, you know, I think he's a really talented horse. And, uh, you know, sometimes the people give his skills. Now he's not going to run by the soft ground. But I think he got a class to get through that, you know. So if it's no good for Batash, it's no good for the old ones, you mean. But uh, I think he's a winner because he's no crowd, will be very quiet. And he, I think this year he got the whole year behind him because, you know, all the cover and he turned up in a quiet place and he just go there and do the job. My, my, yeah. my only yeah. reservation on, on, on Batash is that I thought his performance last time against Keamoro was his worst performance. And I just wonder whether his form is rounding off a little bit as the year ends. And it, not, not a tired horse, but he looked like a horse that had a busy season last time. He looked like a horse that had a busy season when he disappointed in this race 12 months ago. I just wonder whether he's peaked for some of the big summer days and whether this is a bridge too far for him if he does turn up. It goes without saying, just for all these races, don't be afraid to hold out uh, until a little bit later, just to, to, to really be sure what the ground is like or to be as confident as you will. And it's going to play a part in the in the undercard as well, Bill. Yeah, big time, big time. I, I mean, ground, draw, all, all these things. I and mean, there's good horses in there. You know, John Quinn runs, you know, you, you get surprises in this race. You know, it wouldn't be surprised me, surprise me if Keep Busy or... Liberty Beach or one of those popped up if they were drawn well to, to, to create a, a, a big shot. You know, the, the French horse wooded. I'd definitely look at look um, look um around for a bit of value, but um, make a challenge would be the top of my list at the moment. What are you looking at for the rest of the card? Well, I, I think when we get... The opera would be interesting. I mean, there's the Irish have got a, got a big chance there. Um, we're still waiting to really kind of work out who's, who, who's going to run, but I... Um, I thought Alpine Star would be very hard. Jesse Harrington's horse, I thought she'd be very, very hard to beat. But the the um, French raider Torquil will, will definitely serve it up to her. But, you know, the Irish have got the usual suspects, kind of fancy blue, Alpine Star, peaceful. Um, I kind of got them very wrong. I was on Rabia in the, um, <laughs> in the in the French Oaks and got them wrong. But I think these two, it's just it's, it, these three, there won't be much between them. But I thought Alpine Star would come out best of those. Yeah, I love the way you, you call the French Raider as well, running at Longchamp. So that's how partisan we are here on Star Sports for the <laughs> for the British and Irish Challenge. Anything else taking your eye, Sylvester, on that card? Uh, I think the Jess, Jessica Harrington's filly, you know, she, she was, she's was she been very good. Like, And I, I think she should be favoured. And, uh, you know, I, I think the easy track will be suitable for her as well. So uh, she'll be on top for me. She's such a likeable filly. Obviously, connection struck Arc Weekend last year as well with uh, the Zoffany filly, uh, who's become a little bit disappointing, uh, whose name escapes me at the moment. But uh, yeah, Al it's, it's Albina or something. Albina, Albina of course, uh, who's been essentially disappointed this season. But Alpine Star, one of the most like one, one of the most likeable fillies in training, really. Um, yeah, it's going to be fascinating, Bill. I think I suppose to sum up. Um, we're all pretty keen on Stradivarius anyway, in the sense that this is probably going to run more like a mile and six arc than a mile and four arc. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the the other race we should just mention is the Foray, mm. the Group One Foray, which is a great race, which sees um, the home team represented by Earthlight, and the away we're sending over One Master and Safe Voyage. Um, really interesting because the conditions should suit all three of them. Um, One Master, previous winner of the race, um, William Haggis is um, mayor, who's who's in great form, and 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 John Quinn, Safe Voyage, obviously won in, in Ireland last time and mm -hmm. loves soft ground and seems to be rapidly improving really that's one of the races i'm looking forward to the most um of the whole weekend funny enough and i think that lopi fernandez is going over there too but earthlight super impressive last time um you know i i, I fancied earthlight to potentially win a guineas over here and and obviously he, he was held up but seven furlongs bad ground he, he'd interest me if it's if, if the price was a bit bigger I'd, I'd really fancy him but this is a race where you get traffic problems and Safe so boys are probably up and out from away from the traffic, but but Earthlight will be tough to beat. Yeah, Lope Fernandez obviously has done well previously on French raids and seven furlongs on that ground would probably be ideal for him. A race that Ireland won before with um, Gordon Lord Byron back in the day. Sylvester, what are you most looking forward to seeing in Longchamp? Uh, well, probably the arc, but uh, 
this race uh, Bill just mentioned and um, with Safe Boy and I think it will be like very interesting. To me, he's the most improving horse for the whole season. Mm. Since they changed the way to ride him, you know, when they, they let him go forward and he enjoys to be in front. If he's a slow pace, I think he could win. Yeah, the interesting thing on Safe Voyage on that on that race is that this the foray is traditionally a race where you get a lot of traffic problems. Yes. Yeah. Turn in and the hold up horses sometimes get out, sometimes don't. I, I, I normally find the ones that don't get out in that race. But but the likes of um, One Master and Earthlight, they may be weaving their way through. And if, if they give Safe Voyage too much rope, like Silv says, he might be away and gone. Yeah. That was like, the, um, yeah. You know, Haggis horse definitely needs the pace. You know, he he wants a fast pace. He looks very good when he's a pace, but if if he's a tactical race with a slow running, I I, I can't see him win. Mm. You know? So that that's that's the arc chat. That's the arc zoom room. Don't forget to check out the website for Sales blog as well. I guess uh, Stradivarius each way or enable is our synopsis uh, for the arc. Yeah. Yep. Don't yep. don't forget the the in swoop though German Derby yeah. where he, he could go well as well. But look, great, great race to look forward to. Thanks, guys. Take care, Johnny. Good luck, Sylv. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, and John. Th th thanks for watching. Thank you.